we announced this Monday, and like the number one question has been, why are the fucking hell are not mechanical? <laughs> Usually, like more like swearing than that. Um, they're not mechanical because we think we have created some really cool technology, and if we did these mechanically, they would be hyper expensive. It would be like a two hundred dollar keyboard, which means that me and seven <coughs> prophetic dudes worldwide would roughly buy them. Um, we think that going with much lower price points will get a much better distribution. And we have some plans that are relatively crowdsourced for um, some of the stuff I'll show you, where masses of people will actually make the whole product better for everyone. Um, that's why we're going with the price points we're going with. If I start with the keyboards, it's uh, Apex, and this is Apex Raw. Something that we discovered after we did Sensei, and then later Sensei Raw, which is like a feature down, slim version of the Sensei, uh, is that the deck works really well. And it makes a lot of sense that when you spend like a tremendous amount of time trying to come up with good shapes and ergonomics for any kind of product, to do a feature slim down version of it. Uh, the Apex will retail for $99, and the Apex Raw will retail for $69. And I'll try to show you now why that's actually a lot of product for your money. If you start with the Apex, um, it has 504 programmable keys. And that's one of those bullshit numbers that always tarry along with like gaming equipment that means absolutely nothing. Um, where it has relevance is that we actually tried really hard to make technology that is accessible. So I wouldn't say that my wife would use this, but it's getting pretty close to that. And she doesn't play games or play with computers at all. Um, the keyboard has four layers that you can easily switch between just by using these buttons. It has 16.8 million colors that you can choose from from an illumination perspective. And that's not a bullshit number, but I'm going to try to make it meaningful. The keyboard has five different zones that you can program uh, per layer that you can assign individual colors to. The cool thing about that is as you navigate between these layers or you navigate between profiles, you can use specific color setups. So imagine that you're launching Call of Duty 2 on your computer, boom, it will change into Call of Duty mode with the color scheme, say green camera, whatever, that you have applied to that. You know and you can actually visually see the keyboard changing shape. You launch World of Warcraft for your healer class, Boom, the keyboard goes white on you. Uh, can I just check something? When you launch the game, uh, do you have a launcher application that yes. detects it automatically and changes? Yes. Or do you have to type in Call of Duty mode? Okay. Uh, come on, what do yeah. you think? Okay. Yeah. Dude! Yeah. Okay. Um, it also makes sense that as you're navigating, say, World of Warcraft, and you're switching between layers, you're switching between two classes, having the different layers with different color options means that you know where you are. And being able to navigate the keyboard visually and fast is the most important thing we focused on. The oversized overcompensating spacebar was developed for exactly that purpose, to make the, com the keyboard comfortable to use. It looks stupid, like borderline silly, but try putting your hands on it like you would actually use the keyboard. And you will see that <laughs> the benefit of having the spacebar that big, when you sort of gravitate your hand towards the WASD area, all of a sudden, instead of having your basically one angle where you can use the keyboard, you have suddenly get roughly like 17 to 18 percent more freedom for your hand. It looks silly, and it's a small thing, but it actually makes a meaningful impact. The W key has a small, two small bumps in it, so you can actually feel on your hand where you are when you're using the key. Just another one small feature that you know helps you navigate the keyboard. The raised macro rows here, again, just for quick fire combination of keys, and you can feel where you are. So instead of you having to look down whilst yeah. you're mid-game, yeah. you just feel it, yeah. Yeah, that's because the, the bump here, yeah. you know, without looking you can feel that rich, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, other things about the keyboard that might be worth mentioning is that I just spewed like 16.8 million colors and 504 programmable keys and like and they're all like kind of bullshit numbers unless you can easy access them. We've worked really hard on doing that. Um, <coughs> The thing in gaming is that there are a lot of really cool gaming products out there, and not just from us, but also from some of our competitors. They all have one fundamental design flaw, though, is that, that it's complex technology. It's advanced, but it's complex. Advanced is good, complex is not good. <laughs> so we try to take something that's complex and then make it very easy accessible. So if you want to program a key here, it's actually as simple as just 
finding the key on the keyboard that you want to program in this specific case it's the raw keyboard down there I'll take one of the macro keys and it's just inserting and making your macro the macros for the SteelSeries Apex keyboards it, um, are somewhat interesting because they can contain everything from time delays you have cooldown on a spell let's say 7 seconds you can just insert a 7 second delay uh, to characters and to you know again like you can switch layers and colors that goes into these profiles it also means that you can save this entire profile and share it with other people which we'll be building a community around we think actually that that would be really cool when I was younger I spent a lot of time um, hunting the internet for config files for Quake and Counter-Strike uh, in the hopes that sometimes that would make me a better player imagine that we can do that now both from a color perspective and also from an entire keyboard setup that you basically automatically load where your entire config for the game will be added to that profile without you even having to touch something in a game Did it make you a better player? Yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have this job I have today <laughs> um, Another thing sort of like level next for the keyboards uh, and while it's for us it's really important to get distribution of these keyboards um, and to have low price points for the keyboards is that we are creating an engine that will learn from the crowd and I say cloud and crowd in the same sentence I'll give you an example of where we are right now and then I'll tell you where we're going I just started a play session now imagine that I'm playing on this keyboard I'll play for like 45 minutes I'll record a session when I'm done with that, I'll stop my recording session and I'll get a visual, visual representation of what I just did. Based on that, I can start to actually try to improve my keyboard setup. If I, say, had tried to hit the backspace key seven times and had failed miserably at that, and that's the only thing that happens in that area of the keyboard, it would probably be very immediately visual for me to like, move that. Now imagine, and this is like a level next thing, that we have uh, 10,000 people who have the keyboard that play the same game as you do and their win record goes up when they have a keyboard combination that's exactly like this and we would make that recommendation to you as you're looking at that that's why having a, bar, a large install base of a keyboard could become very very interesting um, imagine the same engine would say you know what, why don't you take your V key and remap that to you and you'll save 7% on your travel distance which overall when you hit it 150 times over a 45 minute period makes would, yeah, yeah, that yeah, actually makes a difference Well, it's usable to yes. you know, like you get for a race car or anything else like that um, I know a lot of, well a few of your competitors have got something similar but it's useless information um, in a sense like, I think Rocket has got something at the moment but it awards your achievements for button presses but that information isn't usable. It'll yeah. make you a better player. Yeah, no, no. yeah. you just it's know you're just an ego thing. To yeah, say, hey, look yeah. how good I'm doing, and half the time it scares you when you're it's playing it at night, and suddenly you hear this massive voice. It is, it is, <laughs> it is as amazing as getting an achievement for finishing a game. Mm. Yeah, but if you can find out what if you can find out, exactly. better and, and so forth. Te technology, better. from our perspective, can make you better in two ways. It can, it can become a natural extension of your game. And by that I mean if you're aware of the fact that you're using a mouse while you're playing a game, the mouse is failing you on a very fundamental level. If you're like stretching to hit the buttons or like trying to make it work, it's a shitty product. If you're aware of the fact that you're typing on a keyboard when you're using it, instead of just communicating with your computer, it's a shitty product. And the other way to make you a better gamer is by helping you. Um, on the sensor you can adjust things on a sensor level down to a pixel level. Um, for, for a sense of behavior and acceleration curves of your mouse, you can do a lot of things that will make you better. We think this for keyboards will make you a better player. Um, the keyboards were not designed from our perspective for esports. Almost all of our products are designed for competitive gamers. This is a notable exception because we feel like we're going after sort of like the next level of the pyramid of gaming as we see it. It goes from like my grandmother the place. Uh, Minesweeper to esports athletes, um, and that's hardcore gaming. Um, the difference between a hardcore gamer and a competitive gamer in our universe, in our ter terminology, is that the hardcore gamer doesn't necessarily travel around the world with his equipment to win money, to fight other humans. He plays a lot of games where he's beating something else. 
Uh, that's also why the keyboards are bigger than, than say, 6db2, which was designed to be stuffed in a bag and can withstand even United baggage luggage handlers, which was not no small feat to accomplish. Um, these keyboards are bigger and stationary. That being said, we have taken some precautions in terms of like durability. Um, for instance, one of the things that we absolutely despise on keyboards are feet that you either at, like at wrist threads that you attach to something that says click, or feet that sort of clicks out, because everything that clicks can break. So for this keyboard, you just if you want to change height for comfort reasons, you just take off these feet and you can replace them with this. One for a seven degree angle and one for a ten There's degree angle. There's a lot angle. more grip on that as well. Yeah, yeah. and oh. they don't break. Um, well, I would say like if you break these, you but they can go missing. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You can buy new keyboards. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I know the amount of times I've had keyboards with a little plastic sort of flippers, yeah. and yeah, they've broken or even just the little. Obviously, you've got a bit of plastic, but the grip on it is yeah. so so small. Shitty, uh, when you sort of, <laughs> yeah, you can see that it moves when you're when you're really intensely you know, playing games. Yeah, it's terrible. I agree. Um, other difference between the two keyboards really just is that this has four levels, four layers of keys that can be programmed and switched between on the fly. It has 16.8 million colors. It has five zones on the keyboard. And uh, that can be programmed into what we call active zone, so you can visually see where you are and what's programmed. The RAW has two layers, it has one color, it has no active zones. This has two USB ports on the back, and the RAW version does not. Is that a single USB connection on the other end? What do you mean? Uh, uh, for connecting this to the PC, is it a yes. dual connector or a single connector? Dual connector. Dual connector. Okay. So those are the two keyboards.